Hi. Konnichiwa. Salutations. Greetings and howdy. <laughs> I'm Alan, president of Hope Larp Group, and today we are going to discuss the different types of boffers and the benefits and flaws of each one. The first one we have is your simple three quarter inch whole noodle tampon of doom. Also known as a, just a basic round boffer. I like calling them tampons of doom. It's funny because they look like tampons. <laughs> the benefit of this one, it's really cheap to make. I think I made this one for less than five bucks. It's just a simple pool noodle from the dollar store. Three quarter inch piping foam from Lowe's. Cost $1.29. And the rest of it is some duct tape that I had laying around. I think I paid $3 for the roll. The downside to it is, one, it looks horrible. Granted, I made it... It is actually extremely safe because it's got the pool noodle on there, so you can't feel that. Actually, this one's pretty light. Most of the time, they're pretty heavy. You can make these, instead of using duct tape, with gaff tape or nylon tape, which is a lot lighter. Gaff tape, sturdier and you can actually paint it. Duct tape you can't really paint. The next type we're going to talk about is a flat blade ultralight. This is my flat blade ultralight. Graphite fishing or graphite golf club inside there. It can be made with kite spar and nylon tape and also can be made round too. But I like the flat blades because they look a little bit better. This one's really, really light. See, I did some detailing in there. This one was about $30 to make. The benefit of it is, one, it looks cooler than the round one. The downside is, flat blades tend not to stay together as much, so you have to do a lot more repairs to them. See, you have to repair it a little bit. Um, the next one we're going to discuss is your basic flat blade. That's not a ultralight. This one I've had to do a lot of repairs on. This is one of my oldest ones. You can see I just wrapped some leather around there. You can decorate your weapons however you want to. It's, ultra, it's very light. It's made with camp mat foam inside the core and a Nerf ball in the pommel. And some leather around the handle. The benefit of it is one, the aesthetic purposes of it. Two, it actually lasted pretty long because it was made with camp mat foam. But my children got a hold of it and broke my tip off. That's why it's repaired with duct tape. It's made with gaffer's tape. I don't personally like the nylon tape because it's a pain in the butt to paint. But it is what it is. The next one is a flat blade made with duct tape. And this one looks really, really horrible because I did made it really, really fast. And what it is, it's made of a piece of full noodle cut in half and then cutting quarters to make the blade part. And then I just use the leftover at the top. And I don't know if you can actually I don't know if you can actually see this right here, but this is what the nylon tape looks like. I just recycled a core that I already had. That's nylon tape. And electrical tape right there. It's actually pretty light. But the next one we're gonna discuss is actually there are some other kinds of uh, weapons out there I don't have an example of, which uh, most battle games use, uh, which are the big ones that have the cloth sheet around them that are made of camp mat. Those are really good. They're heavy. Belagarth and Dagger here uses them a lot. They're heavier, but they last for years upon years with minimum repair to them because they're all straight camp mat foam, piece of cloth, and a wooden core. The next one is an old-fashioned style latex weapon. This one I got many years ago. My actual ex-fiance got it for me, but it's pretty nice. It's light, but it's not very detailed. I mean, it still looks cool. This was the Excalibur one on Dark Knight Armory. 
it's got a rounded tip instead of a uh, pointed one. I mean, it still looks fake, but it's made of solid latex. It's a poured latex with a plastic core in it. I mean, it's light. It's durable. It's lasted years. Still makes a better aesthetic purposes than, you know, just any other basic buffer. Next, we're going to talk to you about is a more new style latex weapon. Now, this one's one of my personal favorites. This is an Atler Nemesis. And it's basically just a work of art. This is all handcrafted. I can actually see the detail on the handle. But it's a Viking dagger. <coughs> but it looks exactly like the original ones. All the way down to every little detail in there. It's very light, very durable. It's got a bit of an edge to it, a little bit of steam, but at least you know when you get hit. These are the ones I prefer because they are aesthetically pleasing completely all around and very, very, very durable. It also comes with a nifty scabbard. So, benefit of these, longevity, aesthetics, and the benefit of these is longevity, aesthetics, <laughs> and you can actually feel them when they hit you. That's all I have for today on the benefit and other ones of basic latex weapons. My camera girl, my sister, is like bawling right now. I don't know if you can see her, but she is just laughing her butt off at the whole me being close up and trying to say that and just repeating everything I just said. Ooh, look, blooper. <laughs> but that's all I have. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed my videos, please click the subscribe button and make sure you give it a thumbs up. Always click subscribe, thumbs up. Thank you for watching the videos. Sayonara.